This is the Town of Dighton Board of Health regular meeting, Thursday, November 3rd, 2022. It is now 6 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And at this time, we'd like to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, um, for new business, 3A, we'd like to table that. Oh, for the people at home watching, it's the bond permit fee waiver request. I'm Apache. sorry, I'm sorry. It is the bond permit waiver fee request for Apache Way Farm Rescue. We would like to table it because I am associated with the rescue and therefore we would need one other voting member, which in the future we will be having, so that will be tabled. I'll motion to table the barn permit um, fee waiver request for Alpaca Way Farm Rescue Incorporated. Apache. Apache. Oh, <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> Apache, sorry. At least it was a real word. <laughs> and I second that motion. Can I? Yes. Okay. Could I have a vote, please? Aye. I vote aye, and it passes to table it for future. 3B, review, discuss, act. Vote to recommend to the Board of Selectmen to appoint Paul Pacheco as a member of the Board of Health. Can we have discussion in the matter? Yes, please have a discussion. Um, it was the committee last night who had made the recommendation in regards to the appointment of Paul Pacheco. Um, I would like to present my findings. Um, we were presented with many candidates. Each of them had unique skills that I could see bringing to the table to continue to improve both the board and the health department. This was a difficult decision as I can see potential in all the candidates. One particular candidate stood out to me, that was Patrick McGovern. Patrick's experience with facilitating a program where services were provided to residents to help decrease the census at the hospital showed me that he can identify a need and he can act on it. Something that would be of great benefit to both the board and the health department. It also shows me great leadership. Without much experience in Dighton's lo local government, I believe he would provide a fresh perspective and his dedication to his previous endeavors leads me to believe he would be the best candidate for the board. Last night I went home and I woke up about 1.30 in the morning and I said, you know, something, something's on my mind. Let me go over this application. I went over the application and the way this board is wor working towards with the selectmen, we're trying to go forward. We have a lot of new programs coming down the pike from the federal government, from the state, that we have to incorporate. Um, I know tomorrow is an issue that we have to have an overtime employee come in to fill out some paperwork that is due the state and it has to be done because we are overworked. We've tried to apply for um, help in a clerical set. There seems to be not enough funding. We really need to go the grant avenue. We have to get a grant person to help us. Mr. McGovern has done quite a few grants on his application, I understand. And I understand he would be willing to further educate himself on applying for grants, which is a huge positive to the new Board of Health. So I agree with you, he would be a phenomenal addition to the Board of Health. With that being said, can I make a motion? Yes. Um, I motion to vote to recommend the Board of Selectmen the appointment of, um, 
I'm sorry, Patrick McGovern as a member of the Board of Health. And I second that. Can I have a vote on that? Aye. Aye, and the motion passes. Probably you actually need to step down. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, I have to step down and vote. And I will step down as chairman and vote. I, for recommending Mr. Patrick McGovern as our seat to the selectmen of Dighton. And the motion passes. Next is review, discuss, act, Board of Health fee schedule. May I have discussion on that? So we've been talking about this for a while. Is everybody knows costs for everything that's been talking about salary increases for employees and such. We came up with our suggestions for some of the fees that we would like to. Now, these are just our suggestions, so mm -hmm. this is the, the column in red next to it. Um, you'll see a couple of them as you go through that we said, hey, let's um, let's add this one in or that one that wasn't there before. So um, there's a lot there. Uh, it could take a while. We can do these obviously one at a time. What's going to happen is once this board decides, here's the fees we want we would then have to recommend them to the selectmen. The same thing as the transfer station. The selectmen are going to have multiple public hearings where people can come in and comment on the fees before they get implemented. We would very much like these fees to be done by January 1st because that's when we renew all the licenses for all the food permits and the installers and everything else. So honestly, we'd like it done sooner than that, but I don't think it's going to happen sooner than that. So um, this may have to wait until you know, next year for the fees to go up for some of the stuff. But, um, yeah, we, we fight a never-ending battle with costs going up. And these fees have not been adjusted. I've been here five years. We haven't adjusted these fees. I think we did a few of them. But um, in general, most same thing with the transfer station. They've been stagnant for a while. So um, we're here. We can talk about whatever you want to talk about. And we can do whatever you want to do. So I'm guessing that you came up with these numbers by looking at other towns that are comparable and what they had and kind of coming to a... Some of it was other towns mm -hmm. um, and their fees, and some of it was how long does it take to do a thing? Mm -hmm. All right, it takes an hour um, of my time and half an hour of her time, and we go, all right, and that's how we came up with a fee. Or that takes four hours by the time we do this, like a septic. We have to do an open hole, stone under the tank, a final inspection and then a grading inspection plus you got to review the design plan and the as built plan and so we're like all right it takes however many hours and that's how we came up with those prices if that all makes sense yep on the perk perk test is there a surcharge for a development like no. extra no it's per lot how the fee is structured right now and I we didn't propose changing that so it's just per lot same thing with there's one in there for test holes mm -hmm. so Dighton requires a hole at each proposed foundation because the building code requires that the basement floors be above the water table so mm -hmm. we witness a test hole and we charge $75 per hole because um, some of these places we may dig more than one hole some of them it's it's just the one so that's why it's like per hole and that's a change, right? Because it was yeah, before it, it was yeah. the lot, and because then now it's per hole. Because sometimes we go into a drainage basin, we dig four holes. So we made it per hole instead of per lot. Now the, that's our suggestion, obviously. The conservation site review. Does conservation also charge per acre? Yes. But for like a septic repair, it's just the $25. But if you get into a subdivision with like 50 acres, it's $25 per acre. But what we'll generally do is, if they're only going to perk a small area of the lot, um, we would s look at what the area was and go 200 feet away from it, and they would just certify that area was clear of wetlands that we're going to be digging in. So you wouldn't necessarily have to pay for the whole thing. It depends on where you're digging and what you're doing, but but it's $25 per acre. Because she usually walks the property before um, 
she signs off. So what exactly is an active project complaint investigation? Like, what would that entail? Uh, so for example, if somebody was installing a solar facility and the neighbors complained about dust or noise, and we had to keep going out there to follow up and investigate, it mm -hmm. takes a lot of time out of the office. By the time the call comes in and we do an intake report, and then we have to set up a meeting with somebody, we have to go to the site, we got to take pictures, and you got to go back and follow up. It just takes a lot of time. It's not just a regular construction inspection, which we're doing regularly. Mm -hmm. So um, it was starting to be burdensome to the office. Is this something that other towns have, or is this something that we kind of... Well, a lot of towns use 53G consultants to do a lot of their stuff, uh, which is an outside consultant. Mm -hmm. And so they would have to do it, and it would just be an hourly rate for that. Okay. Um, Usually, if there's an initial complaint and they say there's dust, we would go down there and look at it. And if you know, we say fix it, that's fine. But if it continues and that kind of thing, we're only talking about the ones that are okay. that rise above. I noticed on the groundwater determination, you didn't go up on that 75 per lot? We didn't. Again, this was just our suggestion. We can go up with it if you'd like. It's not. Um, First time I've seen it, so. 75 to 100 is what other, the, the range for other towns. Okay. So if we go out to do one, it's more. But if you're going to do six lots in a row, you know, you're there for, you know, you can do six faster than you, this, than one, not faster than one, but obviously the time in driving to the site and back obviously gets reduced, but. Um, when you get to the last page, animal control is on there. Mm -hmm. Uh, we didn't touch that because at this point in time, we haven't discussed the bottom permits, stable permits, which obviously will be on our next meeting's agenda. Um, and it's in our regulations for those first offense, second offense for the leash law stuff. Mm -hmm. So we got to kick some of that around, but that's how we left it after the second meeting last night is obviously we got to figure out where this stuff's going to end up. Yeah. Um, so that's why I didn't, I'm not going to change any of those fees until we know what's happening. You'll see the betterment program was on there somewhere mm -hmm. I sure page that. four maybe um that one there again until we talk about the veteran program and all that i don't see the need to change any of those fees at this point in time until we know where we're going to be at with that a lot of that is in interest rate dependent and stuff like that but again that's further we'll, we'll get into that later uh i think that was about it oh and there's stuff for the trash bags yes yeah, and the waiting. dump the transfer station stickers mm -hmm. and both of those say waiting for the solid waste committee to weigh in because right. we're waiting to hear from them and we got to get that done soon because obviously December, uh, january 1st is coming up pretty quick and what kind of time frame are you looking for with this the hope would be that the solid waste committee makes a recommendation on november 16th at the next meeting and we haven't talked about it yet, but I'm hoping our next meeting might be on the 17th, which is the night after, mm -hmm. um, which may be a joint meeting with the selectmen and that we can do what we did last night and kind of just roll things along. Because once they decide they want to do something, they're going to have those public meetings and hopefully we can get those done by the end of the year. That's the hope. Okay. But we may have to decide on the transfer station sticker sooner than that because we usually start selling those pretty soon now. Okay. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we do usually start the stickers somewhere just before Thanksgiving. And we've already started getting complaints because people are calling asking when the really? stickers will be. Yes. Yeah. So um, John, the transfer station attendant, when he came in tonight, told us that he has received numerous complaints, inquiries also. Mm -hmm. And we've had a couple also. So I'm not sure how to move this along, but we really need to. Even when does the Solid Waste Committee meet again? Because they're going to give us a recommendation, right? 16th. That's why I want to have a meeting on the 17th. Oh, okay. And the 17th so is a joint meeting. The 16th, John? What? 16th is yeah, the next. I mean on the 16th. Oh, that's right. We're talking about another date. And it's towards the end of November, right? Yeah. So we're going to have to forget about that. Okay. 
Can we work on trying to get something earlier, even if some people miss it, so at least we can get something done on this? Yeah, absolutely. Well, if we don't get a recommendation from the Solid Waste Committee, I think the Board of Health has to make a recommendation. At least on that. We, we don't need a recommendation from them, but obviously we created them to give us advice. Yeah. But if it's just one thing, like this sticker fee, mm -hmm. we have to roll it out, then we have to roll it out. Okay. But, um, we'll see if they can meet sooner, and if not, then so we'll take it. So I think on the 17th, we definitely would have to do something with it. Okay. Um, would I like the whole fee schedule ratified? Yes, but I don't know. Again, I don't know if we're going to get there or not. So. And excuse me again. No, go so ahead. Mid November, I start sending out all the permit renewal. It's it's the permits themselves, the letters to remind them, and if we're going to go up on the fees, we really should do it. Then all of our fees renew January first. Mm -hmm. But if they want to raise these fees and they want to have three public hearings. It's not going to happen before January. It will be January first. You know, it's going to. Oh, so regardless, if so, we may have to just let things stay the way they are for the renewals, and then change these fees for next year. Do we have to have three? That's hearings? what the selectmen want. I mean, oh. technically, the board of health doesn't have to. We can just change the fees, but the selectmen, the policy right now is they have to ratify all the fees for all the stuff and they want to have public input before they do it i do want transparency i want the oh yeah no i, I get it but i'm saying yeah. if so we have three meetings and then it goes to the second we know they can have three meetings so we can could the board just have a hearing and let people come in and i was thinking of that three too. seems like a lot i mean i can see where they're going with it but it does seem like a lot but either way we have to come up with what we want for fees mm -hmm. and then we would post it so if tonight we said, yes, Todd, we're going to go with all the fees you recommended, then we would post it at the next meeting and it would be with the agenda packet that everybody could see and say, here's our fee changes. And we could send it out to all the people who have permits currently and say, here's what's coming. If you got any issues, either get them to us in writing or come to the meeting. That's what we did when we um, did Title V regulations and stuff like that, um, body art regulations. We put it out to those who work in the field and said, here, if you got any issues, let us know. Okay. I know for me personally, I don't see myself making any changes. Um, we have the Solid Waste Committee because we have these folks that have more knowledge on this and you guys have done the research, so I don't really feel like I'm one to come and make any changes to this. Everything looks pretty. And they haven't gone up by a lot. No. They really haven't. Um, there's a couple that went up, like the shared septic system doubled. And the construction the shared permit. system is if you get a septic system that's 10,000 gallons a day, it's a lot more work than a system that's 300 gallons a day. A um, lot more bells and whistles, um, mechanical stuff, all that kind of thing. So that's why that one doubled to a lot more mm -hmm. review time. Um, Double. But yeah, some of the other fees, I would say a lot of them were just, you know, again, we know how much time it takes and over the years, you know, you get your raise every year. It costs more for the office. It costs more for the the gas to drive to the site, everything else. So um, with some, of, some of the very modest increases to keep up with the times. I'm satisfied, I think. Yeah, I am as well. Would you like to make a motion? Like I say, this, this would be to place it on the next agenda with mm -hmm. these fees. It's not to approve them. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, that, that's the motion to put it on the next agenda? Yes, as, you know, if you want to say as presented or with this one change or whatever, yes. Okay, so I motion that um, we put on the next agenda for the meeting of, was the date October, not October, <laughs> November 7th, is it the 17th? 17th. Um, November 17th, um, the changes in the P perms and um, fees, recommendations by the Solid Waste Committee. And I step down and second that. Could I have a vote on it, please? Aye. I step down and vote aye also, and motion is passed to put on next agenda. Good next is review, discuss, act, vote to appoint Ms. Solomon as the tobacco inspector for the Tobacco Collaborative. So we hire an outside firm, oh, it's, we don't pay them to do it. Um, they're out of Fall River and they've always inspected our tobacco establishments in town. And it's been, it was one person for a long time and then she retired and now 
we actually have somebody now, but I guess this is going to be an assistant to that person. So it's been a little bit of change over over, over there, but hopefully this person will be around for a little while. But and it is with the collaborative. It is with the collaborative. So I don't actually do any of the tobacco inspections. The collaborative does those. Can I make a motion um, to recommend Ms. Solomon? Um, that the Board of Selectmen appoint her as the tobacco inspector for the tobacco collaboration. I step down, I'm sorry, I step down and second that. May I have a vote please? Aye. I step down and vote aye. Motion passes to appoint Ms. Solomon as the tobacco inspector for the tobacco collaborative. Next is Review, Discuss, Act, Betterment, Community, Septic Program. You want me to talk or you want to talk? Why don't you talk? Okay. Please. So this is a program that was rolled out back in the 90s by the state. And it's a loan that the town will get from the state. We then take that money and loan it out to homeowners in town when they need a new septic system. So, for example, your septic system is going to cost 20 grand you then take out a low interest loan from the town to pay it off. It gets paid off over 20 years on your tax bill. So it works out pretty well if you don't have money, but you get equity in your house, say, but you don't necessarily, but anyhow. So it's a good program. But what happened was it lasted for a while, like 15, 20 years, whatever it was, but then the interest rates dropped. And when you can get a home equity line for 2% or a mortgage for 3%, but the, this rate is 5%, nobody was taking advantage of the program anymore. So the town stopped the program back in 2016 or 2017 because nobody had been taking advantage of it in a couple of years, so they, they stopped it. So it's a good program. Uh, it does help out people. What happens most of the time is people don't realize they have a problem with their septic until they go to sell their house. So if you're selling your house, this doesn't work because it's a repayment over 20 years. So if you take this $20,000 loan, fix the septic, and then you sell the house a month later, what we were finding was a lot of work for this office, which is why you saw on that fee schedule, there was if, if you repay it early, because there's work that has to be done. And it's a lot of work to set this all up, each individual homeowner, because you gotta have three bids for everything you're gonna pay with it and everything else. It's just a lot of paperwork. But, it's a good program. The problem is, if we want to do this, and I'm not saying we shouldn't, um, we have to go to town meeting to get the town to go enter into a loan to get this money from the state, and we have to figure out how much money we want from the state. The last time this was done was in June of 97, town meeting, and they got $200,000 from the state at that point in time. Um, the veteran program didn't roll out until almost a year later because that's how long it took to put it together from a town perspective. Obviously, this time around won't be as difficult because a lot of the legwork was already done. But if this is something we want to consider, obviously, we'll have to get our information. We'll have to read about it. But it's going to have to be a warrant for the spring town meeting um, if we wanted to do this. A lot of work is done in collaboration with the treasurer and the assessor, right? And the assessor. Um, I've only worked with this from the other side, when I was an engineer helping out homeowners uh, get the loan in that end of it, I've never done this end of it, but there's a lot of information on mass.gov that you can get. And like I said, we've got the previous um, program that we had here in town. So. I was involved with a lot of these. A lot of them were senior citizens that just didn't have the money to um, upgrade their systems and um, before they sold the house. And it did help. But I totally understand going through all that work and then all of a sudden they sell the house. <coughs> That's not what the program was meant to be for. No, it isn't. It isn't. But it did help them out a lot. Oh, the, the, it is. And especially I now know, interest rates but, are going up to 8 or 10 percent. You know, it's, yes. It's but a still, I lot. understand it's an added drain on our clerical end at the Board of Health. And the administrative end, yes. But that's not what this is about. This is about, is, is the program going to help the, the taxpayers in town? And if it's something, again, if this is something we want to talk more about, we can get information and put it in the packet for the next meeting and we can further, because 
there's nothing we can do about this until we can get a warrant on the town right. meeting. Mm -hmm. So we have some time to. When did you say the latest that we could like submit a warrant for the town meeting? Like March or April. Oh, okay. Yeah, we've got time. So we've we have time. time. And again, we, if we're going to do this, we need the treasurer to come into our meeting and the assessor, and so we can all be on the same page before we do this. I would definitely want some more information. Oh, definitely. It was yeah. a good program when it was around before, and I, yes, I know a lot of people that took advantage of it, and because now it looks like. Interest rates are going up, so and it's going to get harder. So, um, yeah, we can put together stuff for the next meeting. I don't know if we bring the treasurer in yet until we know, you know, where we want to go with it, and then mm -hmm. we can bring um, him in at another meeting. Okay. Um, can I make a motion that we table the Betterman Community Septic Program? I guess a later date. I step down and second that. Can I have a vote on this, please? Aye. Step down and sec and uh, vote aye, and the motion passes. Next is F, Review, Discuss Act, Board of Health meeting schedule. Uh, so we already kicked around that we have a meeting on November 17th, which is a joint meeting with the Board of Selectmen. Uh, that's at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Um, so we could do a meeting just ahead of that. Uh, potentially I know we're running into veterans weekend uh, is next weekend and Thanksgiving's weekend after that but there's a lot of stuff that is kind of moving fast at the moment some of the stuff may be joint with the selectmen but we may wish to have stuff of our own ahead of it but right mm -hmm. now we're scheduled for November 17th for our next meeting and then after that it would be December 8th and I don't know and but the issue was and Dave can weigh in on this a little bit. We had moved our meetings to 4.30 because it was more convenient for most of us. Mm -hmm. But Cable may or may not be able to get somebody here for 4.30 um, on those days. So it would be preferable if the meetings were still at 6 o'clock. At the present time, it's only Laura and myself. So the problem is if I could call into Cambridge like on a Thursday morning, I can't make it back to town until almost 5.30 at night. We do have two, two members coming on board, so maybe we can look at it again. But the on the safe side, if you want to be recorded, 6 o'clock will work better for us. The other option you have, and some people don't like it, you can Zoom it if you want to, to go earlier. But, you know, I'll leave that up to you. I'd rather Zoom it just because we're trying to not have you guys working all these hours. Um, if you would be willing to Zoom it. How do you feel about it, Barbara? No, I agree to Zoom, but I don't run the Zoom. <laughs> no, you don't, but the camera's <laughs> over here, so we would most likely put the table down on the floor so the camera would I'll sit wherever you want me but, to. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter to me that much either way. Yeah, I'm still know. open to the public either way. Mm -hmm. It's still being recorded and it would still be aired for broadcast later because this isn't live anyway right now anyway, right? On oh, we're going live right now. Oh, yeah, okay. But if we do Zoom, it's not live. It gets replayed later. Okay. I mean, if you want to do a Zoom meeting, we can probably try to do like a, uh, a crisis run, go through everything, see how you feel about it. But I know it's not like you have no technicians around and Zoom goes down and it makes it difficult when you get off an audience, you know, in the house and everything else. Mm -hmm. so just let me know what you like to do. Okay. Thank you, Dave. So we have, them, we have them some meetings for stormwater, so mm -hmm. we are familiar with how this works. Okay. And if we do it at 4.30, then Karen Brady is around and Mike Mullen to come help us if we have, we have struggle technical. getting started. That's right. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's another good thing. So the 4.30 Zoom would not be too much of an issue if you wanted to stay at 4.30. Okay. Would that be okay for you? Yes. So we're going to stay at the second Thursday of the month at 4.30. Obviously, mm -hmm. in November, we moved that one meeting because of the holidays. But. Mm -hmm. We will be adding a new member. Should we pen this in case there's any issues? Well, and yeah, obviously, once you get a full board, then we can talk okay. about it again. But for now, yep. Did that require a motion? Either way. If you want to make it, it'd be fine. All right. It wouldn't hurt. <laughs> I don't want to make. Um, um, I make a motion that we continue on. Was it every third Thursday? Um, second, yeah. Thursday. Second every second Thursday, um, four thirty, depending on what happens, and, and that it will be a Zoom meeting. 
I step down and second that. Could I have a vote, please? Aye. I step down and vote aye. Motion passes. <clears throat> Next is review, discuss, act, <coughs> serve, safe, class, training, and payment. So uh, Roz has lined up a serve safe class for 14 people in town, uh, three of which are sitting here in the room. We've also reached out to some of the local organizations like the Lions Club and the churches and whatever, and we've got 14 people that have taken the class. But at this point in time, we're looking to get payment authorized for three of us to, well, three, maybe four. Right now it's Roz, me, and Mrs. Mello who are looking to take the class. And that money will be paid for out of training, um, out of that line item. So we need approval from the board in order to get the um, payment made. Thank you for setting that up, Roz. Uh, I know a lot of different people have been asking about that, so they'll be happy. Um, can I make a motion? Yes. Um, I make a motion that we authorize the payment out of the training line for the serve safe class um, for Todd, Roz, and Nicole. Um, coming to $468.18. And I step down. Oh, boy, I second it. Hmm. <laughs> Quiet. Could I have a vote, please? Aye. I step down and vote aye, and the motion passes. Can I add an additional motion to that? Um, Barbara will be attending as well, um, looking to also get an additional $156.07 out of the same line item as soon as she's all set, um, signed up and whatnot. Do we have to make a motion on that also? She did. She, okay, that was, that was and okay, and I'll second that. Could I have a vote on that? Aye. And I'll step down, I'm stepped, oh boy, I'm getting confused. It's <laughs> gonna be the lack of oxygen. Um, I vote aye and the motion passes. The only delay is I was I wanted to attend, but I was supposed to be operate on the 17th. Oh, so that's why. So you moved with, your operation so you could come. Well, they moved it. <laughs> they moved it. But yeah, so that's I didn't. I wanted to go. It wasn't because I didn't want to attend. Next is review, discuss, act, board of health website. So I don't know if anybody knows this that's watching, but most. Recently, a month or so ago, we switched over the website carrier for the town of Dighton. As part of, um, you might be able to speak on it more, but uh, the new website provider, it's supposed to be a simpler website and everything for people to use and manipulate. But one of the big reasons for doing it was to make it more ADA compliant. Um, again, for those of you who don't know, when you say, for tonight's agenda, click here, and you underline the word here, if, if a computer is reading it to you, you're going to want to click the word agenda, not necessarily the word here, because it doesn't necessarily recognize the underline, so you have to change <coughs> the way it was done. And all the documents in there need to be OCR or readable. Um, like an Adobe document is just a picture, the computer can't read that to you, so it has to be a readable document. So basically that went online, uh, I don't know, a month or so ago. We have not spent any time bringing our website into compliance because we've been getting hit with these DPH things and um, these capacity assessments and stuff, which I'll bring up when I get to the health agent report. But anyhow, so we've been behind in doing it, but uh, we were notified that because of the grant that we got, we had to expedite our timeline. So what has happened is we spent mostly, Mrs. Grassi, um, spent time going in and removing all the documents off our website that are not ADA compliant. Uh, what is left there is ADA compliant, but we have another, I don't know, 50 to 75 documents that we have to get converted and uploaded to the website, but they're not there now. So as of today, we're compliant. We just mm -hmm. don't have, we're not fully there. Part of the reason for this is we are going to be going online with our permitting system. But in order to go online with our permitting system, we have to update all our permits because we haven't done that in years. So we were in the process of updating those. We said, well, why don't we get those updated before we upload them to the website? And then we got, so we had to shift things around. Mm -hmm. And so again, there's like, there's very little on our website. We are planning on adding to it. We already reached out to Mrs. Mello to find out 
what she wants for COVID documents. Obviously, we're going to probably adding more for ticks and everything else and add another page and links and whatever. Yeah, I was wondering if I could have, like, under that line, my own public health nurse that you would click. And then when I was looking at other towns, that looks like kind of what the route they take. And, and that's, we're not there yet with our expertise on the website. But yes, we most likely add a page for public health. Mm -hmm. And then we'll add opioids and everything else. And we can okay. keep expanding. But right now we had to make it compliant. Yep. And as of today, our site is compliant. As of yesterday, our site is compliant. Great. Um, but it's bare bones at the moment. It's the beginning. It's um, the beginning. So we'll get there. And, and we will get there. But like I say, converting the documents, it's not hard. It's just step after step. After. And again, a lot of our documents needed some work mm -hmm. to get there. But Very good. I'm glad that. Say it was you most, that mostly done. Mrs. Grassley. I did very little. She always does very well. I don't know how she does it, but she does it. So do you need a motion on that at all? Nope. That was just an update. Okay. If we hadn't gotten it compliant, then it would have been a need for a vote. Okay. For you to decide what you wanted to do. Since it's compliant, I don't think you need to vote. Okay, that's great. Other items not reasonably anticipated by the chair 48 hours in advance. We don't have anything. We don't have anything. Old business, review, discuss, act on health agent job description. I believe we're waiting for a selectman's report on that. That's still in progress. So can I make a motion that we table? Um, the discussion on the health agent's job description. I second that. Step down. May I have a vote, please? Aye. I also vote aye. And that will be tabled until the next meeting. Inspectors report. Town nurse, please. I'm going to step down as a board of health member. Go all the way down here. <laughs> I should change my outfit, too. Like I'm a whole different person. <laughs> All right. So October was a busy month. Um, I visited Lincoln Village again. Um, we're thinking that we're going to do that either every three months or every six months, something along that lines, depending on they're getting some kind of grant where they are able to make up packages for the folks for whatever I speak on. Um, this time I went and I spoke about um, medication management. Um, it was really great. We had maybe eight people. Um, I then incorporated into the following month, into November's um, Strawberry Vine, some more information on medication management for the folks that had gone to that so they could have some reinforcing on what we learned that day. Um, on October 18th was my first blood pressure clinic over at Primetime. I'll be doing that every third Tuesday of the month. Um, it went great. I love seeing those folks. I love going there. Um, I enjoy seeing you too. Yeah, I made lots of friends. Um, I'm continuing to attend the weekly public health excellence grants meetings. Um, so far, we've made um, a job posting for the grant coordinator. Um, I think once we get a grant coordinator, things are going to move a little bit faster. Um, we, I believe we put that posting for three weeks, and then it was going to come down, and then we we're going to reassess and see what we can do to maybe um, get that going. Um, like the state said last time they were here, we're pretty much in line with everyone else that's in our group. So we're not behind, we're not ahead. Um, it's a process. I mean, it's hard to get anyone for any position right now. Um, a grant coordinator is very, is probably not any easier. <laughs> um, the town had its flu clinic, which was now a flu and COVID booster clinic on October 22nd. Um, I actually will be attending the select men's meeting next Wednesday. I have a presentation on that, so I'm not going to give any further information. Um, I don't want to give it all away. Um, <laughs> but I will speak on that um, next week. The last thing I had, I actually realized it's more of a board member. I attended the um, MHOA conference last week. Um, I learned some more about hoarding, um, food investigation, and septic. Um, it, was, it was a good meeting. Um, it wasn't what... It was more board things, so it wasn't so nursey. So it wasn't it wasn't totally my cup of tea, but it, it had it had things that I can bring to the table. So I enjoyed it, and that's all I have. So I'm stepping down, unless anyone has any questions. No. Thank you. Very unless much, it's about Mrs. my clinic, Miller. I'm not telling you anything. Great job. We appreciate you. 
Yeah, I got. I got to say, having a public health nurse who's not just dealing with the stuff that comes in is adding a dimension to this department. That I mean, we're supposed to be here for public health, and we haven't been doing a lot of that. So it's good to have. I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy to get out to the folks and stuff. I think they enjoy it. And I think they enjoy knowing that we're not missing them. We're appreciating them also mm -hmm. we'll and their worries that. and what they have to go through. There's a lot out there. Health agent, may I have a report? Sure. Uh, so we're getting caught up in some stuff around the office because uh, perks have slowed down a little bit, um, less than a month out at this point in time, which is better than the what two or three months I was before. Plan reviews, I'm on like the last plan that was in there. We're getting, it's just that this stuff takes time. But like, for example, like dealing with the website and dealing with um, some of the other stuff, including the joint meetings and the solid waste stuff, and we had to get out a whole bunch of information because as of last night, the fee for mattresses has gone up to $40, which is a big thing. Um, I'll come back to that in a minute. But anyhow, it's been a lot of work, so the deadline to meet our phase three capacity assessment is tomorrow. Uh, we have not started on that yet. So we are, that's why obviously um, some of the overtime, so hopefully we can come in tomorrow and get that done. This is a Department of Public Health. They sent it out to every town in Massachusetts. There were three phases to it. Phase one was whatever it was. I don't remember how many questions, 180 or something mm -hmm. like that. It took hours. Phase two is each individual, which everybody here did. Um, and that was more about yourself. And now phase three is information. They're asking us for example, they picked one restaurant in town or two restaurants or three restaurants, whatever it was. And they said, give us every inspection you did in the last four years. All right. Give us every housing complaint you did in the last four years. Give us every tobacco inspection you did over the last four years. And it's just a lot of documents. We got to pull them out of the files, scan them in, upload them. And you got to type in a response for this stuff. Like, why didn't you do this? Or why did you do that kind of thing? The year of COVID was left out because we weren't supposed to be doing inspections in 2020. So that year is a gap. So it's like 18, 19, and 21 is what they're looking for. So it's just taking some time. So the hope is tomorrow we can get all that pulled out and scanned in so that we can deal with it. I was hoping it would be extended as the two previous ones were. And this seems to be almost the most time-consuming one. I think it is. Um, but I think what they're running up against is this outside entity, third party that mm -hmm. they hired to do this has to analyze all the data and have it to towns basically by budget season. So they're under the gun to get their end done. So if they extend it too far, they're not going to be able to meet the, their end deadline, which mm -hmm. is a crucial deadline for all 351 towns in Massachusetts. We need to know what we're getting money for because there's grant money coming down and we got to know where it's going to go before we set the budget. So, um, so that's why I think it hasn't been extended, but um, like I said, we're going to do our best. If we okay. don't have it done tomorrow, hopefully by Monday we will. Um, we appreciate you working yes. on that. I realize that it's been I a lot of work. I hope in the long run that it's, it is beneficial. Um, so like the, the, the CARES grant money wasn't all used for Board of Health. The ARPA funds, very few communities used it for Boards of Health. And the intent of that ARPA funds was supposed to be used for public health. So this new round of funding is only going to be used for public health. And so hopefully this will help mm -hmm. um, on, on the other end to get us the public health nurses that we need and the housing inspectors and all that kind of thing so that we can close the gaps that we have. Because I believe what the survey is going to expose is, for example, the restaurant inspection form we're using is an old form. They've, they've changed the form. But they told us when the new form came out, keep using the old form until you're done with them. Because why throw away a thousand perfectly good forms? But I think they want everybody to convert to an online inspection report form so that everybody's doing the same thing and it's all being logged in and the state can see it too. It makes it easier if there's an outbreak at a restaurant, you can see what was there and all that kind of stuff. So they're trying to get us there, but to tell a town you need to buy this program, this software, train everybody on it, start doing it this way without any money is what they usually do but I think they realized they weren't going to be able to get all 351 communities up to a certain bar without throwing a lot of money and resources to get there but part of this is the public health excellence grant which should combine services so hopefully we'll all be able to get where we need to go I, at the conference um, one of actually two of the communities that were like the head community for their group spoke and they have already 
have some shared services and I was excited to see what they were doing with it. They have an online thing where you go in and you pick what, what you need at that day and they'll bring the person over and stuff and what they had going on sounded great. Um, hopefully we get to that same point. Well, that's the, uh, the hope. So hopefully in January we get some good results from this assessment and then we can incorporate it into budget season and hopefully 2023 will be better than 2022. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming in on your day off tomorrow and doing it. Appreciate it. Um, but that's kind of the, the role of the health department is to do what needs to be done when it needs to be done. Um, kind of been doing that since we got here. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a matter of different fires get lit that are hotter than others. And, you know, we're not always in control of what we're working on each day and we do the best we can. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so back to mattresses. So solid waste committee made recommendations and that went last night. We had a joint meeting with the selectmen and the board of health. There's a lot of fees that we're talking about increasing, but those are not going to roll out yet. But it, Immediately, as of yesterday, the price of a mattress and a box spring went to $40 a piece. Uh, we've got signage that we just gave to Mr. Lawrence so he can post it. We've gave him a prepared statement so he can read it to people and give it to people if they question why. Um, and we're asking for people to be a little more considerate because right now what happens if you come in and the person in front of you has got a mattress? Mr. Lawrence has to inspect that mattress to make sure it's recyclable, first of all. Then they have to go load it in a container that's a closed container. It can't be open because we don't want rain to get at it. These people may need help loading it into the trailer because it's got to be packed correctly so we can fit as many as we can into the trailer. And then John's going to then have to come back in line. So if you're waiting while he's helping these people, there might be a little bit of a delay, which is part of the reason we've kicked around the idea of having a second attendant on Saturdays when it's busier. But it's going to be more work for Mr. Lawrence. For inspecting these mattresses some of the mattresses are going to get rejected because of bed bugs mold etc and they won't be able to be recycled he then has to fill in a little report for why it's being rejected and we have to account for every one of those mattresses to the state um, so we have to file a report monthly with the state for all the mattresses that we're collecting and all the ones that we're rejecting so it's more work for mr lawrence it's more work for the office um, but it's what we got to do mm -hmm. Thank you for doing that. We got them some gloves. Let's say we got them signs. So, <laughs> but we we're all know. set, John. But this is going to be a moving target, and we we made we need more stuff. Like, and I don't know what that stuff is, mm -hmm. but we'll see. We went over it today, and we'll see how it goes. And there are a lot more things coming down from the state and government, right? There are. The other one that rolled out was textiles. Um, you, you've probably seen it in the newspaper, or the TV. You can no, no longer throw away textiles; they have to be recycled. We've had the pink bag program in town for four years now, but the program with that vendor has been faltering because they closed their regional office in Taunton. So they stopped coming curbside, and we've been asking people to bring stuff to the transfer station, and they'll come when we have a big enough pile, they'll come down and make one trip and pick it all up. As of last night, we decided or voted to terminate that relationship with that company, and we've st hired a new company, which is... CMRK, and we're meeting with them either Monday or Tuesday to decide on where to put the bins at the transfer station. They will do curbside, but you're going to have to call for an appointment. We've got to get a whole lot of educational material out there to people on all this and how we're going to do it. We're hoping we can get something out with the town clerk when he sends out his request for okay. dog licenses and stuff like the that. Like, we're going to try and get information mm -hmm. out as much as we can. The electronic message boards are great too. <laughs> um, but right now they're being used for the Main Street water main replacement because that's going to be a while. But please do not throw your textiles in the trash. If you want to bring them to the transfer station, you don't need a dump sticker to get in there in order to drop those off. Um, we want to collect them. First of all, it's tonnage that we don't have to pay for to, to dispose of, to burn. And second of all, we're recycling. And so we get paid for the, those recycling materials. So it's a win-win. Mm -hmm. So um, that's that. And I don't think I have anything else at this point in time. I'm sure I do. I just can't think of it. Thank you, Mr. Pilling. <coughs> Public input. Next is approval of minutes. Regular meeting, September 8th, 2022. You could do them all as one motion. Okay. I'm going to motion that we approve the regular meeting minutes for September 8, 2022, as well as for the joint 
meeting with the Board of Selectmen October 17, 2022, and the special meeting October 24, 2022, um, which was the Board of Health member interviews. I step down and second that. May I have a vote, please? Aye. I also vote aye, and the approval of minutes is passed. I think that's it for this evening. Thank you all for attending. Our motion. No. Either yes. One. No. Oh. Yep. Say, yeah, you can't end it yet. I no, motion I just to had that little thing there. And to adjourn at 6:51. I second that motion. Have a vote. Aye. Aye. You step down, sir. Oh, I stepped down. I forgot. You know I'm low on oxygen right about now. If you get now. another member, you won't have to step down anymore. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and we are adjourned. Thank you all.